Welcome to DX Sudoku training video number 60. This three part video series will show you how to create a Sudoku puzzle from scratch. You may want to watch DX Sudoku training video number 59, part 2 in this series, as a prerequisite for this video. Part 1 seed creation is about creating a starting point solution needed for creating a puzzle from scratch. In addition to basic seed creation, Part 1 will show different tactics for creating different solution grids using the same solution path. Part 2, Puzzle Creation, will show you how to create a puzzle from a solution grid or seed solution. More importantly, you will be able to create different solution paths using the same solution grid. In Part 3, Special Topics, a process for creating new puzzles from existing puzzles will be demonstrated. And how to find a solution path for a predefined given pattern will be discussed. We begin by having a quick example of the process detailed in part two of this video series. We are currently showing a seed puzzle on the left. On the right, we have created a values grid from the seed solution. Step two, we now have the values grid on the left. We create an initial set of givens with blocks four, five, and six on the right. Step three, we have the initial set of givens on the left and we create our symmetry grid on the right. We begin step four of the process. We have our symmetry grid on the left and on the right, Hadoku is ready to receive a new set of givens. We will use a dual asymmetrical deletion algorithm. We will start with an inner spiral colored in green moving clockwise from the inner part of the puzzle outward. And the outer spiral colored in red will travel counterclockwise starting from the lower right. Here is the initial setup for the deletion algorithm. Cell 5,7 is outlined in black and will be the first symmetry value to be deleted. We are showing the summary window to the right of the grid and we have a starting difficulty score of 306. The way the process will work is we will delete a value on the left, copy the values into the clipboard, and then paste the values into the Hodoku on the right to see our score. We have successfully deleted our first symmetry value. We colored the cell purple to indicate it was a location of a symmetry value. We currently have a score of 350. We switch to the outer path and we successfully delete the symmetry value at cell 8,9. Strangely, our difficulty score has dropped to 334. We return to the inner path and we successfully delete the symmetry value at cell 2,4. We now have a score of 438. Back to the outer path and we find gold. After we delete the symmetry value at cell 1,8, we now have an extreme puzzle with a score of 2212. When we delete a symmetry value resulting in a high score, we color the background peach to indicate we found a piece of fruit at this location. When we delete the symmetry value at 9,2, we find our third piece of fruit. We now have a score of 2600. We delete the symmetry value at cell 8,6, and our puzzle now has an obscene score of 12,976. For those of you who watched part two of this video series, the answer to the obvious question is, yes, I did. The deletion algorithm is complete. We found one more piece of fruit. Our final score is a whopping 12,990. Every technique listed in brown and red is a future DX Sudoku video. It will be two years before I get to forcing chains. This puzzle has the highest difficulty score of any puzzle I have created. We save this puzzle to a local file. We will be using this puzzle as our starting point for creating new puzzles out of an existing puzzle. I will now demonstrate the process of creating new puzzles out of an existing puzzle. We have three instances of Hadoku program now running. On the far left, we have our behemoth puzzle solved. In the middle, we have our behemoth puzzle loaded and on the far right, Hodoku is ready to receive a new set of givens. The first step in the process of creating a new puzzle from an existing puzzle is we add back one value from the solution grid on the far left to our initial puzzle. We are currently focused on cell 1, 1. We right click over cell 1, 1 and select make 2 from the pop-up menu. The reason we chose 2 is because 2 is the value in, of cell 1, 1 in the solution grid. We then copy the values to the clipboard. We paste the values into Hadoku on the right to see what we have created. We have created an unfair puzzle having a score of 1564. 
This is not too bad of a puzzle. XY chains can be tricky to find, but this is still a pretty good puzzle. As you can see, we are keeping count of which type of puzzles we have created. The tally for unfair is now showing a value of 1. The next step in the add back process is we click on the undo button to get rid of the last value we added. We are now ready to test the next add back value. We right click over cell 3 comma 1 and set its value to 4 as indicated by the solution grid. We cut and paste and we create a medium puzzle having a score of 494. I consider the lock triple to be a special case of the naked triple. This is a pretty nice medium puzzle. Just think, by eliminating the one given in cell 4, 1, a mild manner 494 level puzzle becomes an insanely difficult monster having a score of 12,990. We continue the add back process for each open cell in our initial puzzle. Here are the results with a final tally. We created 8 easy medium, 1 hard, 10 unfair, and 38 extreme puzzles. If we are looking for easier puzzles, we can repeat the process a second time. We save the last unfair puzzle we found to a local file. We then load the unfair puzzle as our new starting point. We run the add back process a second time. Here are the results. We created 13 easy medium, 12 hard, 31 unfair, and zero extreme puzzles. The medium puzzle created by adding back the value of 9 in cell 8, 1 is now showing. This puzzle is a very nice medium puzzle with 9 hidden singles, 2 naked triples, and 3 locked candidates. This run of the add back process also created some nice hard puzzles. We are showing the add back puzzle created by putting a value of 5 back in the cell 8, 5. We have a hard puzzle with a nice combination of a naked pair, a hidden pair, a skyscraper, a W wing, an XY wing, and four lock candidates. This completes the discussion on the add back process for creating new puzzles from an existing puzzle. We now move to the next topic. Next we are going to discuss puzzle creation by masking. A mask is simply the initial arrangement of givens for a puzzle. People like seeing puzzles having interesting symmetry to the initial givens. Depending on the mask, it can be very difficult to find a solution grid that works. What we will do next is demonstrate a method for finding a solution grid having a valid solution path for a particular starting mask. We are now showing three programs running. On the top we have Notepad++, to the left is regular Notepad, to the bottom right is our hero Hadoku. This is the pattern of givens we will be using. The first step in the process is we will create our string of characters we will use as our mask. From Hadoku's Edit drop-down menu, we select the Copy Values command. From Notepad's Edit drop-down menu, we select the Paste command. We now have a copy of the puzzle as an 81 character string in Notepad. The dots or period characters represent empty cells, and the first nine characters in the string represent the first row in our masking layout. Next, from Notepad's Edit drop-down menu, we select the Replace command. We replace all the 1 characters with a capital X. We do the same for all numbers 1 through 9. Here is our masking string we will use for creating a solution grid test puzzle. The next step in the process is we need to create some solution grids we can use for testing. We click on Hadoku's Create New Puzzle button. We now have a Hadoku-generated extreme puzzle. We save this generated puzzle to a local file named T1 Original Puzzle for later reference if needed. Next from the View drop-down menu we select the Solution Path command. We now see the Solution Path window to the right of the grid. We scroll to the bottom of the Solution Path window. We right mouse click over the last step in the Solution Path and select Solve All Before command from the pop-up menu. We click on the Execute button to complete the puzzle. From the Edit drop-down menu, we select the Copy Library Format command. We click on the Paste button in Notepad++. We now have another string format representing our puzzle showing in Notepad++. We click on the Replace button in Notepad++. This brings up the Replace dialog box. We put a plus character in the Find What edit box, and we leave the Replace With edit box empty. We then click on the Replace All button. Our library format string no longer has any plus characters. We position the blinking insertion cursor between the third colon 
and the number 4 character as shown. We click on the record macro button. We type the plus character and then we press the right arrow key once. The insertion cursor is now between the 4 and the 6 character in the line as shown. We click on the stop recording macro button. We click on the macro playback button once to see if it is working okay. The insertion cursor is now between the 6 and 3 characters as shown. We could just keep clicking on the playback button, but instead we keep pressing Control shift p on the keyboard until there's a plus sign character in front of every number across the line. We should now have a plus sign in front of every number as shown. Next we select all the text. We then click on the Copy to Clipboard button. We then paste our newly formatted string into Hadoku. As you can see, we now have a values grid showing. Using Notepad++ to create the values grid is a much faster way than doing it manually with click and pick in Hadoku. We save the values grid to a local file named T1 Solution Grid. T1 meaning the Test1 Solution Grid. Next, from the Edit drop-down menu, we select the Copy Values command. We paste the string into the regular notepad as shown. We then copy the masking string with the X's into the clipboard and paste it just underneath the 81 character string representing our solution grid. Then, whenever there is an X, we type the solution number, and whenever there is a dot, we just type the dot. We are using the mask to define a new puzzle string. We complete typing in the new puzzle string and select the line as shown. At this point, we could copy the line into the clipboard and test it in Hadoku to see if we have a valid puzzle. But before we begin testing, I'm going to create nine more additional solution grids and test puzzles. Be right back. I'm back. We now have 10 solution grids and 10 test puzzles. All the dots line up. We are now ready to begin testing. We begin testing by selecting the first test puzzle and then copying it into the clipboard. We paste the puzzle string from the clipboard into Hadoku. We have successfully found a solution grid having a valid solution path for our mask. The solution path is now being shown to the right of the grid. We type the word pass to the right of the first test puzzle as shown. We continue to repeat the same steps for the second test puzzle. The second test puzzle also passes. We continue to the third test puzzle. The third solution grid, however, fails as indicated by the dream crushing multiple solutions dialog box. We indicate the failure by typing in the word fail to the right of the third test puzzle. We continue testing the remaining puzzles. Not too bad. Half of the solution grids passed, half of them failed. What this means is, for each test puzzle that passed, the solution grid it was created from has a valid solution path for the mask we created. Next, consider the mask we are now showing. It is the same as the first mask, except we have removed four givens. The location of the four givens we removed are highlighted in purple. I am now going to create a new mask string of X's, generate 10 new test puzzles, and then test them to see if the solution grids will work with this new mask. Be right back. This time we were not as successful. Only two out of 10 solution grids worked with our new mask. This brings up a very important realization. The first mask had 38 givens. The second mask we used had 34 givens. As we reduce the number of givens, it becomes much harder to find a solution grid having a valid solution path for a mask. Consider the mask we are now showing. This mask has a total of 30 givens. In order to find a solution grid having a valid solution path for this mask, we may need to test thousands of solution grids. Testing thousands of solution grids manually is impractical. So we would need a database of solution grids and some automated testing software to actually do the testing. Even though the two masks we were using were not very pretty, I was extremely pleased I was able to at least demonstrate the concept. So what have we done? A puzzle having a difficulty score of 12,990 was created. Over 100 puzzles were created using the add back process defined in this video. And it was demonstrated when you remove givens from a mask, it will reduce the number of solution grids having a valid solution path. 
In preparation for this video, I worked really hard trying to answer an interesting question about the solution path associated with a particular mask. All the successful solutions to the masking examples shown in this video all had the same solution path and difficulty score. The question I was trying to answer is, can we have a mask where one solution grid creates a hard level puzzle and another solution grid creates an extreme level puzzle? I only saw one solution path for any set of successful solution grids for any given mask. For now, this will remain an open question for me until I see proof one way or the other. This concludes the video series on creating Sudoku puzzles from scratch. The Sudoku universe is vast and large. If you do find any interesting Sudoku puzzles, please post your 81 character text string along with some commentary to the link provided in this video's description. This completes DX Sudoku training video number 60. Please support DX Sudoku. Thank you for watching.